Hey there, I'm going to briefly cover four ways that you can sync your HubSpot data to Airtable and the choice of which option you choose will be based on your needs. So let's get started. The first way would be via the HubSpot integrations. There's two of them. So if we go into HubSpot here, for example, you will be able to click on this little cog here in the upper right corner settings. And from settings, if you go over to integrations, click on connected apps, and then you want to click on visit app marketplace. From here, you would type in Airtable, hit enter, and you'll get two separate options. So these are the first two ways that you can sync to Airtable. So this option here, this first one just called Airtable, this syncs Airtable rows. It does a two-way sync. Now there are some pros and cons. So this Airtable sync only does company contact and product. So if you have an Airtable database with company, contact, or product, and you want to do like a two-way sync, this would be like an option, a way to go. So once you actually install this app and go through the through the authentication process, you'll get a screen like this that'll ask you which data do you want to sync. Now notice here, it's only looking for company, contact, or product records here in Airtable. And on this side in HubSpot, obviously, even though it's showing more data, these are the only three things that I can add. So if you want to do deals or anything like that, unfortunately, it won't let you do that. But you could say, hey, I want to sync contacts, and it'll ask you what's your contact base is, and you can select the base, select the table, and then you'll be able to like go through and select the actual data that you want to sync within contacts. So I believe it syncs every five minutes, 24 hours a day. So it does do a sync and you can choose between both. You could choose only send data to HubSpot or only send data to Airtable. So you can choose uh, which database is going to be the primary and then you can sync accordingly. So some downsides to that, um, it's not instant and you only get to choose these three data types. So that's the first way that you can sync. Now this integration, um, I don't believe there is a price with it. It's free. Uh, you can read some of the reviews on what people think about it, but this one doesn't cost any 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 money. Now the second way that you can do that you can do the sync is Airtable workflow integration. So if you click workflow integration, you can install this app and this one is free for enterprise and there's some limitations here. I'm just going to say these these might change, uh, do, you know, from the time I create this video. So just look at what the integration pricing is. In some cases, it's costs money. In other cases, it's free. Um, so this one, if you have it installed and set up and configured, um, here's an example of it in Flow. Now, once you configure this app, if you're like in workflows, for instance, and you're creating a workflow, you can trigger a sync based on any type of trigger you want. So you could, whatever trigger you want when you're creating a workflow, you can have a step that says, hey, create an Airtable row. So you'll be able to click and see integrated apps and you'll see this integrated app. Now, one thing I've noticed about this app is once you do the authentication, you can't re-authenticate. So be careful which database you choose uh, because you'll notice here I've already chosen a, a base and a table. I'd have to uninstall and reinstall the app if I want to choose like a different table, a different base, for instance. Once you do that configuration, let me just show you how it looks. You'll be able to select a base. You can select a table. And then basically, once you select a table, it'll automatically have these header and footers where you can select the field in Airtable, and then you can match it to whatever property you have in your HubSpot. You are limited, so there's only 10 that you can sync. 
So you can't choose more than 10 at this time, uh, 10 properties. So that's kind of a downside. A bonus though, with this way, um, this configuration is it's relatively real time. So unlike an integration like with make or something, which we'll cover, there's kind of two integrations with make. Um, this one does happen instantly. So the other sync was every five minutes. This sync is real time, but it creates a table. So it doesn't sync, it creates a table, but it can create a table anywhere that you want and any data. So that is a benefit, only 10 records though. And it has a cost depending on uh, what account type you have. Now the third way that you can sync would be through custom apps. So what you can do if you are in HubSpot, for instance, you can go back to settings. You can go to private apps, private apps. Did I say custom apps? Let's say private apps. You go to private apps and you can create a private app. You can name this private app, whatever you want. You can give it scopes. So you could say, you know, um, I want this app to have access to, we'll say just contacts, contact information, maybe deals, leads, invoices, kind of whatever you want from a permission perspective. And then when you go to webhooks, you can create a webhook in make, for instance, and get the webhook URL. And then you can go in private apps and add that webhook URL and then create a subscription. So I've done that. And what it does is it just creates an app for you. And in this app, essentially, it's just a trigger mechanism. So you can add triggers. I, let me show you that real quick. When you go to webhooks, you can create a subscription, which basically says, I want you to watch my HubSpot data. So deal for instance, and then when a deal is created, deleted, whatever you want, I want you to set to subscribe to that basically. And it'll send over deal information to the webhook on that event of deal creation. Now there is a caveat where it doesn't send all the information it sends, sends object data. So for instance, here, when a contact is created, here's an example. If I go and I click run and it's instant too, I, I might, I might add, this is very fast. So if I go to private apps, let's just uh, go back out of here because I've already done that step. We'll go to CRM contacts. I'm going to just create a contact. Um, James. James at HubSpot.com. James Jones. If I click create, pretty much instantly, this webhook address is going to sync as long as I did it in the right one. And when it sends it over, the data that it sends is going to be metadata. So it's not real data. So let's wait a second for this to show up. Now this integration is going to call me a liar. Let's go back here to contacts. Yep. James at HubSpot. Let me rerun this. Let's look at the history. Okay, must have been running here. So when you click on the data that gets created, this is the data that gets created. So the unfortunate part about this is it doesn't actually give you much information about the data. You would then have to tie that to another integration to pull that out. So if I know that the object ID, for instance, 
I can create this integration. Here's that record that came. So I can click on this. I'd have to go and create another module, HubSpot. I'd have to, if this is a contact I'm creating, I would have to get a contact at this point, right? So now I have that contact ID. Notice it showed James Jones as that contact. I'd have to click here and then map this object ID and then I can get all the information. So for instance, let's just run this with that record we just created. Notice here, I grabbed the content, the object ID from this module, and now I can grab properties about James Jones here. But those properties didn't come here. Anyways, um, that is a third way that you can get connected and you can select output properties. So if you're like, I want everything about this contact, you could just say that and then it would return a lot more metadata. So that would be kind of the third way to sync to Airtable because from here I could do whatever I wanted, right? I could go Airtable, create a record or anything I want at this point. Now this is using make as a platform and this is syncing through a webhook. The fourth way that you would do that. So this includes private apps, private apps and make technically. And then this make integration is the fourth way. And this is just simply using the inter the HubSpot integration to watch the object. So I could say, hey, I wanna watch this sandbox for contacts. The good thing about this is the data, it uh, I'm sorry, the data that it returns, it returns all the data that you want. You don't have to create a private app. The downside is it's not instant. You'd have to configure, I want this to run every 15 minutes, every one minute, every 30 minutes. Every time it runs, it's gonna cost you an operation regardless of whether it returned data or not. So if you have it running once a minute, right? It's gonna be, you know, thousands of operations um, to run, to check, to see if there's anything happening. So it's gonna cost more money. But those are the four ways that um, you can integrate and sync data from HubSpot to Airtable that I was going to show today. I mean, there's more, there's other platforms and apps in Zapier, but these are kind of like the four stable ways that I've consistently used to sync data. So hope this is helpful. Um, I do cover AI integrations, automations. Uh, so follow for more if you're looking for this type of content. See you in the next one.